Goodwood Festival of Speed is an event I've been to many times before. If, like me, you have an interest in things with engines, it's a fascinating place to visit. It's like an open-air museum with cars and bikes spanning from the earliest days right up into the latest Formula One cars, with all sorts of oddities in between. And the great thing is, you actually get to see and hear them being driven. This was the Bloodhound team's third visit, and the festival very kindly provided a huge pavilion which took a whole week to fill. Here's the head of sponsor liaison, Tony Paraman, to explain how it was done. The events team is made up of two people, really. Stella looks after actually putting the event together. So we liaison with the company or the event team themselves. And then we have Jazz. He does all the legwork, if you like, so pumping all the gear, setting up an actual event itself, and then running it when they're there. We probably do somewhere in the region of 150 events a year. Now, these range from very small things like... Uh, sponsor events uh, through to the, the big ones like uh, Goodwood Festival of Speed which is a four day event, massive. Now the show car um, goes to quite a few of these events. The reaction we get from uh, Joe Public if you like um, whenever the show car turns up is amazing, it's fantastic. Every time the show car goes out, every time it's seen by a new audience we get this wow factor. Uh, what a fantastic car, what a fantastic thing. And lots of people think it's the real thing, but of course we have to disappoint them and, and tell them that it's, it's just a fiberglass model at this stage. As well as the show car, there were many other things for the visitors to see, such as the Supercat, the massive six-wheeled truck which will carry the replacement rockets in the desert. Inside, Richard was meeting the public and signing autographs. And here's Daniel Jubb, our rocket scientist, explaining the workings of the rocket and its pump, which is powered by a Cosworth Formula One engine. Jerry took the opportunity to further the educational message by making accelerometers with some visiting school children. Visitors could also attempt to set a record in the ever popular simulator or leave us a message on the commitment wall. As well as all this, there was also the jet engine, a 3D printing display, merchandise and a drag racing track belonging to the F1 in Schools programme. Helping to answer any questions were a team of dedicated volunteer ambassadors. The F1 in schools track provided much entertainment as the public were able to buy a car and race it with the chance of winning a thousand pounds. But there's a more serious side to the project too. It's an educational program running in over 30 countries and participating students learn a whole range of useful skills. They use CAD to design a car which is then milled from a block of balsa, painted and entered for races. They can try and improve upon their designs by trying different body shapes or wheels. The new Bloodhound Unlimited class has created a surge of interest and these cars are now almost twice the speed of the F1 class cars, covering the 20 metres in just over half a second. At Goodwood, several schools came and demonstrated their vehicles. The students' cars were very closely matched and rather embarrassingly quite a bit faster than Jerry's Bloodhound entry. It was great to see how enthusiastic they were and I was really impressed that they had learned to use such high-end 3D software. I'll leave it to them to finish off this week's episode. Cheerio! It started in September 2010. It's a long time, but you get so much out of it. And it's fun. Yeah. How do you go about building your car? What, what do you have to do? Do you have to That's design Henry's it first? department. <laughs> <laughs> we spend... I think I spent at least four months working on the car, with Tom helping me, and we use a, pro a CAD program called SolidWorks. And so once we've designed the car, that is then sent to Yasmarina Circuit, where they use CAM, Computer Aided Manufacturing, that's over in Abu Dhabi, Yasmarina Circuit, where they machine the car, then we have it painted. Fantastic. We are UAE champions, champions, and we have just set, we have just become the fourth fastest F1 in schools car in the world. In the world. Including primary and secondary. So that's fourth fastest in the world. There's so many magnificent cars here, and we get we get, we get so many ideas for our next car here, and I just think it's... So you're going to build a faster one now, are you? We <laughs> already have. It'll be hard to. <laughs> Excellent. Just got to push the boundary.